may not know this, but it is Walrus Awareness Week. And what better time to talk with our friends from SeaWorld about their involvement. They really are involved in a lot of efforts, but Walrus Conservation Consortium is one big one. This is pretty neat. Joining <laughs> us at their Walrus exhibit is Mitzi Sinnott, Senior Animal Care Special. Mitzi, thanks so much for being here. And who do you got there? <laughs> handsome boy is Dozer. This Dozer. is our 28-year-old male, and you guys, he's almost 4,000 pounds. Oh, oh man. Dozer. They like to eat. So, so how much do they eat in a day, and what do they usually like to consume? So right now, he's eating 125 pounds of fish a day. So he gets herring, he gets clams, wow. sardines, squid, all kinds of stuff. So in the wild, he would actually be able to go find 125 pounds of food a day? Wow. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's difficult, but yeah, we have a distributor in downtown San Diego. They get our food supply from all over the world, so we wow. always have fresh food for them. I mean, you got to keep Dozer happy. Oh, my goodness, yeah. his whiskers and his face. <laughs> I want to give him a big hug, but I guess you're not supposed to really do that. <laughs> what a cutie. So, wait, he's 4,000 pounds, is that right? He's 4,000 pounds. Is that and as you guys mentioned before, it's Walrus Awareness mm -hmm. Week. Um, yeah. So we always want to recognize these animals. Usually when you think of climate change and the plight of the Arctic, you think of the polar bear. But right. we wanted to shed some awareness on these beautiful guys. Uh, Walrus yeah. Awareness Week, we're just trying to let people know that with the uh, ice receding up in the Arctic, they actually, their wild populations are having some issues too. So we just like to talk a little bit about that and kind of inform everybody what's going on. Right. I mean, climate change impacting everyone around the globe in so many different ways. But I don't think people realize walruses are, you know, they're right there in those cold parts of the globe, right? So they rely on the ice for so many things. Uh, first of all, the females will often give birth to their young on an ice floe. That way they're kind of separated from the big groups of walruses when they give birth. They use it to rest, and believe it or not, they use it to travel. So they just climb on the ice floe. The floe moves down with the current and brings them to a new area to look for food. So the problem is without the ice, all the walruses are coming up on the shoreline mm. and they're competing in the same area for the food resources. So now they're having to swim further and further to find food. Also, when you get 40,000 of these big guys on a beach, that can get kind of crowded. And sometimes if they're startled, there can be a stampede and they've been seeing some injuries and mortality out there. Oh, interesting. Okay. Right. And they, they have those, I don't know what the proper term is. Tusks. I apologize, but are those tusks? Those are tusks. Yeah. Gonna, oh, here. These are amazing. They can grow up to three feet in length. Okay. They technically are part of their uh, incisors. They're attached to the skull. He does have teeth in the... I don't know if you can get in close. Oh, look at that. Know, wow. but he's got teeth in the air for crunching clam shells. Clams are their primary diet. Okay. Right? He's a boy. And, and are those um, tusks their defense mechanism? Do they use that to defend themselves? Absolutely. Um, they can use them for defense. Their primary predators would be killer whales and polar bears, but they also use them like ice picks to haul huh. up onto the ice boat. Oh, They're okay. very helpful for okay. getting them up and around. So, Mitzi, what right. you're saying is, like a lot of us, walruses like privacy sometimes. They don't want to be crowded with their friends at all times. Yeah, right. uh, so yeah. when it gets, you know, crowded and you, the idea of them, you know, causing these, you know, uh, rumbles, I guess. Um, obviously, the injuries that you're referring to, uh, what have, what can happen? I mean, with tusks that big, they're giant animals. Um, what kind of injuries are they going through? And then how are you guys helping there at SeaWorld? So usually if, um, during breeding season, you'll see the males actually fight for the females. But usually those kind of tusk injuries don't result in a huge injury okay. or mortality. Um, but mainly, like I said, the tusks, they use them for ice picks to get up on the ice floes. The bigger problem is when you have a crowd of walruses on the shoreline and they get startled, they'll actually stampede. So mm. most, of the most of the problem is when they can actually trample each other, injure each wow. other in a stampede. And you said, what, 40,000 of them together. Imagine a stampede oh. like that. Exactly. Ooh. Exactly. Okay, and SeaWorld obviously does a lot of efforts to help animals that have been hurt. Uh, tell us about the walruses and how you guys are helping. So usually when we are part of the rescue program, if there's ever a walrus calf that is either abandoned or orphaned, if uh, they're able to find them, they'll usually bring them up to Alaska Sea Life Center. And on occasion, that's where we are called in to help. Okay. Because mamas uh, usually nurse their young for two years. So when you get an abandoned calf, basically it needs to be on the bottle as soon as possible. Um, they're pretty much not self 
sufficient to like year one or two. So we've actually had the opportunity to go up to Alaska Sea Life Center and help uh, rehabilitate and raise some orphan cats before. Incredible. Uh, Dozer, lucky boy, though, he was born right here at SeaWorld back in 93. Dozer, okay. Oh, Dozer. 